Are statin medications harmful? Are they dangerous? Are they bad for you? I've had a number of patients tell me in the last couple of years that they don't want to take statins because they read that they are bad. We're going to break down what's true and what's false because I know you've heard a lot of things from whether it causes dementia to liver damage to cancer, you name it. I'm going to tell you uh, what I think and what I believe as many of my colleagues believe is true, guys. I'm Dr. Jen Cottle, practicing family physician. All right, this is the thing. First of all, statin medications. These are medications that we use for cholesterol. Statin medications, um, not only do they lower cholesterol, but they also lower cardiovascular risk. So in patients who have had strokes and heart attacks, et cetera, these medications are very helpful. Also in diabetics, et cetera, very, very helpful and others as well. And basically statin medications work by um, blocking an enzyme that your body uses to make cholesterol. So that's a good thing when it comes to lowering cholesterol. It keeps your body from making uh, a certain amount of cholesterol. There are many different brands and types of statin medications, different brands, different generic names, different doses as well. Some statin medications, some statin brands are what we call higher potency, stronger than uh, others. And then, of course, you've got a range of doses as well. So that's just sort of the, the, the skinny. Let's just jump right into the nuts and bolts. First of all, uh, and I've got about four or five things I want to talk with you about. First thing people say is that don't statins cause cancer? Well, this one is an easy peasy one. I can tell you that there is no uh, reliable evidence that suggests that statins cause cancer. I hope that this is clear as day. Um, this is what we know as of now. And by the way, statins have been around for a long time and they're probably one of the more widely used medications that we have. I mean, they've been around for a while. Okay. Um, but no, there's no, um, uh, uh, there's no um, uh, reliable evidence that suggests that statins lead to cancer. That is not something that is even on my radar as a family doctor. Uh, let's talk about liver damage. Some people say, well, do don't statins uh, damage your liver? Well, what I'll say is that we do need to monitor your liver on statins. Yes, statins in some people can cause an increase in liver enzymes or cause a change to your liver or potential damage, but that's not the vast majority of people. Uh, and by the way, oftentimes those effects, if it happens, can be mitigated with either stopping the statin, changing the dose, changing the statin, other things as well. Okay. What I would also argue though, is while you're thinking about this, you're saying, aha, it affects the liver. I was right. Okay. You're not wrong. It can, it doesn't in most people, but it can, I want to be very clear. Um, but remember that most everything that we can potentially take has a potential side effect. Let's take Benadryl. Benadryl will get rid of your allergic reaction but it'll also very likely make you sleepy, right? There is not anything that we do that doesn't have a potential side effect or potential reaction. The question is, what are the risks versus benefits of taking the thing versus the possible reactions that could be gotten? And the thing about statins and liver uh, enzymes is we monitor those. We monitor those before we start you on a statin, while you're on a statin. And if there are problems, we make changes, okay? Uh, now, granted, for some people with major liver disease, et cetera, we're probably not going to use this medication. But, but once again, we've got to put this in proper perspective. Just because uh, the liver could potentially be affected in a smaller number of patients doesn't mean that it's bad. Um, to me, it's not much different than most medications we have. Next thing is, um, do uh, uh, statins cause muscle aches and pains? Um, that's another sort of argument people make. Well, in, in a small percentage of people, they do get muscle aches and pains. And as a result of the statin, that can happen. I do have some patients where I've taken them off their statin because they get muscle aches and pains. Sometimes it's mild, sometimes it's severe. Okay. But once again, we have to weigh the risks and the benefits. And for the patients that I'm putting on a statin, I'm generally putting them on a statin because I believe that the benefits they'll get from that medication, whether it's cardiovascular risk reduction, cholesterol lower, etc etc i believe that that benefit outweighs the potential risk of muscle pains which by the way most people don't even get now if you do get muscle pains what can you do we can change the statin we can change the dose we can do all sorts of things okay and again some people can't be on statins for this reason but but for to have this be touted as a reason for, for example that statins are bad is not something that i ascribe to because in my opinion again it's not much different than other medications on the market another example sulfonylureas for diabetes yes they lower blood sugar they do it really well but they can also lower blood sugar so much they can, they can increase people's risk for hypoglycemia or low blood sugar. Again, a balance.
does the taking of this medication for this patient uh, give potential benefits that outweigh the potential risks? All right. Next thing we, we talked about cancer, uh, which is a no. We talked about um, liver damage. We talked about muscle pain. Let's talk about um, da, 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 dementia. Um, there are things on the Googler Schmoogler that uh, taking statin medications causes dementia. Um, the bottom line for what, from what I have read from multiple sources is that it's pretty inconclusive about this. There are studies that suggest that statins cause dementia. There are studies that say statins do not cause dementia. There are people um, that say that actually dementia um, is, is in part perhaps protected by taking uh, a statin, that you can be potentially protected from dementia by taking a statin. It is not a slam dunk with this one. We need more data. We need more information. And once again, for a lot of us doctors out there, we are looking at the patient's medical problems. And if they've had a heart attack or a stroke or a major family history or coronary artery disease or something else, um, for many of us, we're going to feel that taking that statin is going to benefit them more than a question of whether dementia could be uh, uh, perpetuated or incited, et cetera, okay? Uh, remember too, statins, just like so many medications, are is a medication that can be stopped, okay? Oftentimes, remember this. Um, yes, you always want to know the risks versus benefits and talk about those with your doctor to decide what is right for you, but, but statins, just like so many other medications, if it's not right for the patient, we can often stop it, reduce it, change it, blah, blah, blah. The last one I wanted to talk about is the risk of developing diabetes. Now, this is an interesting one. There are there have been data that suggests that uh, statins can increase blood sugar, and there is some data su to suggest that um, statins may have a small increased risk on the development of diabetes. But I would argue that that still is a multifactorial argument, which means it's not just cut and dry. I believe that that risk depends on a number of things, the dose of your statin, your underlying medical conditions. Are you pre-diabetic already? What's your family history, genetics, et cetera? And once again, even with um, sort of the, the um, potential for increased blood sugar with statins, I'm telling you this, for most of my patients that I've had, I have felt that the benefit that they would get from taking a statin, when statin outweighed this potential risk. Again, it is all about benefit versus risk. That is always the name of the game, which is why even though you may hear that these things are ba bad, you, 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 cannot list, you cannot think about things in terms of black and white. And if we paint something all bad or all good in terms of a medication, that's simply just not appropriate because there are shades of gray, as you can see. While statins are good for many people, no, they're not right for everyone. The question is, is it right for you based on your underlying conditions? So that is what you need to be thinking about. Do not read something and just decide that they're bad. It is far more nuanced than that. And overall, these medications have been around for a long time, have been well studied, and in general tend to have a, 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 an overall positive benefit on things like cholesterol lowering and cardiovascular risk reduction, uh, among other things. Okay, uh, so those are my thoughts. Um, let me know what you think. Uh, it's just, you know, I've had a lot of patients coming in saying, I don't want a statin. I've heard that they're bad. And it's not that simple. It just is not. It'd be like saying that Tylenol is all bad. Um, for most people, Tylenol, the taking of it, for whatever reason, the benefits outweigh the risk. But for some people, it doesn't. Can there be liver damage with Tylenol? Sure. But it depends on the dose. It depends on the person. It depends on, you know, so many variables. So think about this like that. Okay. Let me know what you thought, what your thoughts are. Let me know how you feel, what your ideas are, what, what you do, what you've heard, what you write in the comments often helps me, helps me with the videos I create for you, hoping to educate. Uh, I'm Dr. Jen Caudill, practicing family physician, on-air health expert and video creator. I do daily videos on Facebook. Please like and follow my page. Also on, on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. Click the little bell for updates. Go to my website, drjencaudill.com for my free daily health newsletter. And you can sign up also for my, um, uh, my, my weekly health newsletter, but also my daily health tips. And consider joining my subscription groups where I offer private lives, where we sort of chat off the record about all sorts of stuff. Guys, I hope this is helpful. I'm Dr. Jen. I'll see you soon.